Welcome to my presentation. This is lecture 002. Yung topic natin, structural loads. Structural loads are forces or other actions that result from the weight of all building materials, occupants and their possessions, environmental effects, differential movements, and restrained dimensional changes. type of structural loads so under section 204 nasa inisipi 2015 so we have the dead loads consists of the weights of the various structural members and the weights of any objects that are permanently attached to the structure so makikita yan sa table 204-1 and table 204-2 So, under section 205, we have live loads are those loads produced by the use and occupancy of the building or other structure and do not include dead load, construction load, or environmental loads. So, makikita yan sa table 205-1 and table 205-2. Under section 207, we have wind loads when structures block the flow of wind the wind's kinetic energy is converted into potential energy of pressure which causes a wind loading the effect of wind on a structure depends upon the density and velocity of the air the angle of incidence and the roughness of its surface Typical parts of a building structure. So we have cladding and components. Cladding elements receive wind loads directly. Example are roof coverings and wall coverings. For the components, receive wind loads either directly or from the cladding and then transfer the loads to the MWFRS. Fasteners and farlins are example of components. For letter B, MWFRS, or Main Wind Force Resisting System, pertains to a structural frame or an assemblage of structural elements working together to transfer wind loads acting on the entire structure to the ground. The system typically receives wind loading from one or more surface. Structural elements such as cross breezing, Shear walls, roof trusses, and roof diaphragms are part of the MWFRS when they assist in transferring overall loads. Procedure for design For Main Wind Force Resisting System or MWFRS, mayroon tayong apat na procedure sa NCP. We have directional procedure for buildings of all heights under section 207B. Envelope procedure for low-rise buildings under section 207C. Directional procedures for buildings appurtenances and other structures under section 207B. And wind tunnel procedures for all buildings and other structures under section 207F. For component and cladding, may dalawang procedure tayo sa NCP. Analytical procedure for buildings and building appurtenances under section 207E. And wind tunnel procedure for all buildings and other structures under section 207F. Steps to determine MWFRS wind loads for enclosed, partially enclosed, and open buildings of all heights. We have step 1. Determine risk category of building or other structure. Makikita yan sa table 103-1. Step 2. Determine the basic wind speed for the applicable risk category. Makikita yan sa figure 207A5, das 1A, B or C. 
Step 3, determine wind load parameters. We have wind directional factor, KD, under section 207A6 and table 207A6-1. Exposure category, under section 207A7. Topographic factor, or KZT, under section 207A8. And magikita yan sa table 207A8-1. Gas effect factor, or yung G, under section 207A9. Enclosure classification, under section 207A10. Internal pressure coefficient, or GCPI, under section 207A11. And makikita yan sa table 207A11-1. Step 4, determine velocity pressure exposure coefficient, KZ or KH. Makikita yan sa table 207B3-1. Step 5, determine velocity pressure, QC or QH, under equation 207B3-1. Step 6, determine external pressure coefficient, yung CP or CN. Nasa figure 207B4-1 and table 207B4-1. For walls and flat, cable hip, monoslope or mansard roof. Step 7, calculate wind pressure on each building surface. So, may tatlo tayong equation. So, equation 207B4-1 for rigid buildings. So, equation 207B4-2 for flexible buildings. Equation 207B4-3 for open buildings. Sample number 1. The TVM is made from plain stone concrete. Determine the dead load per meter length of beam. So neglect the weight of the steel reinforcement. So given for plain stone concrete. So from table 204-1. Hindi to siya. We have 22.6 kN per cubic meter. So, the required dead load of T-beam expressed in kilonewton per meter. So, solution. So, kailangan natin yung area. So, we have area 1, area 2. So, based on the figure, the total area is equal to area 1 plus area 2 or is equal to 1 times 0.2 plus 0.45 times 0.25 so the total area is equal to 0.3125 square meter so for the dead load 22.6 kilonewton per cubic meter times 0.3125 square meter so, dead load is equal to 7.06 kN per meter. So, this is the final answer. So, example number 2. The floor fill of light storage warehouse building is made of 150 mm thick lightweight plain concrete. If the floor is a slab having a length of 7 meters and a width of 3 meters, Determine the resultant force caused by the dead load and live load. So, given minimum design loads for live load for the light storage warehouse, 
hindi to siya so we have 6 kilopascal so from table 205-1 for dead load for the lightweight plain concrete so nandito siya so dead load is equal to 0 0.015 kilopascal per mm so from table 204-2 Now, the requirements, resultant force caused by the dead load plus live load. So, solution, dead load plus live load is equal to 0 0.015 kilopascal per mm times the dimension 7 meters times 3 meters times the thickness of 150 mm plus the 6 kilopascal times the dimension 7 times 3 so the resultant force is equal to 173.25 kilonewtons so this is the final answer ok example number 3 the second floor of two story 4 classroom school building is made from a 125 mm thick stone reinforced concrete slab with 25 mm stone concrete fill finishes if the ceiling of the first floor consists of wood firing suspension system 6 mm gypsum board and electrical fixtures determine the total factored load so we have 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load at classroom area in kilopascal now for the electrical fixtures we have 0.20 kilopascal So given, we have minimum design loads for live load, we have school building at classroom area, so we have 1.9 kilopascal from table 205-1. Now for the dead loads, from table 204-1 up to 204-2 for stone reinforced concrete so we have 23.6 kilonewton per cubic meter for stone concrete fill finish so we have 0 0.023 kilopascal per mm wood firing suspension system we have 0.12 kilopascal for gypsum board we have 0 0.008 kilopascal per, per mm then for the electrical fixtures we have 0 0.20 kilopascal now for the required we have the total factored load 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load at classroom area solution for the dead load dead load is equal to 23.6 kN per cubic meter times 0 0.125 meter plus 0 0.023 kilopascal per mm times 25 mm plus 0.12 kilopascal plus 0 0.008 kilopascal per mm times 6 mm plus 0.20 kilopascal now for the total dead load is equal to 3.893 kilopascal now for the live load live load is equal to 1.9 kilopascal for total factored load WU is equal to 1.2 times 3.893 plus 1.6 times 1.9 so total factored load is equal to 7.712 kilopascal so this is the final answer sample number four wind blows on the side of the enclosed agriculture steel building located on open flat terrain in negros occidental 
if the basic wind speed is 250 kph and the design is for main wind force resisting system or MWFRS determine the design wind pressure acting on the roof and the sides of the building use NCP 2015 so we have gi given enclosed agriculture steel building so yung basic wind speed natin is equal to 250 kph from category 5 located on open flat terrain in Negras Occidental so naka exposure category C siya the design is for MWFRS now for the required design wind pressure acting on the roof and the sides of the building so solution so step 1 occupancy category so nandito siya for agricultural buildings so na, category 5 so, from table 103-1 step 2 basic wind speed so nandito yung negros occidental so mayroon tayong 250 260 then 240 kph so since given naman sa problem we have 250 kph or equivalent to 69.44 meter per second step 3 wind load parameters mayroon tayong wind directional factor or yung kd so since building yung ating structural type so ang TD natin is equal to 0.85 exposure category C for photo, uh, topography factor or KZT is equal to 1.0 so naka flat terrain sya gas effect factor so yung gas effect factor kailangan muna i-check yung approximate natural frequency okay for structural steel natural frequency is equal to 22.2 over h raised to 0.8 take note that the h is the min roof height expressed in meters except that the ib height shall be used for theta less than or equal to 10 degrees in our case, our age is equal to 7.5 meters. Then the natural frequency is equal to 4.43 hertz, so greater than 1 hertz. Therefore, the structure is rigid. Our G is equal to 0.85. enclosure classification so since na mention naman sa problem so enclosed building tayo no? internal pressure coefficient so we have enclosed building so GCPI natin is equal to plus and minus 0.18 F4, we have velocity pressure exposure coefficient ito yung kz at saka yung kh so we have table 207b3-1 so since naka category c tayo so we have elevation from 0 to 7.5 meters with corresponding kz at saka remarks from 0 to 4 meters yung kz natin is equal to 0.85 yung sa 6 meters yung kz is equal to 0.9 sa 7.5 meters yung value ng kz is equal to 0.94 so nandyan lahat sa table except sa 5 meters at saka yung sa 7 meters so by linear interpolation makukuha mo yung kz nila no yung kh is equal to 0.94 so step 5 velocity pressure 
So Q is equal to 0.613 K times KZT times KD times velocity squared or Q in terms of K is equal to 0.613 times K times 1.0 times 0.85 times 69.44 squared or Q in terms of K is equal to 2,512.46 times K so where K it's either KZ or KH and Q it's either QZ or QH value of QZ so nakatabulate with corresponding elevation gamit lamang ang formula na Q is equal to 2,512.46K in this case, yung Q natin is equal to QZ and then yung K is equal to KZ so yung Q QH is equal to 2,361.71 Pascal Step 6 we have external pressure coefficient or yung CP for walls so, B is equal to 40 meters. Horizontal dimension of building measured normal to wind direction. Yung L is equal to 35 meters. Horizontal dimension of building measured parallel to wind direction. Ito siya. Since na ang building natin is naka-gable type, so ito yung gamitin natin. from table 207B4-1 to siya windward wall so yung L over B natin all values so yung CP is equal to 0.80 then yung Q is equal to QZ for leeward wall yung L over B natin is equal to 0.875 so, pasok siya sa range na 0 to 1. So, CP is equal to negative 0.5. So, yung Q is equal to QH. For side wall, yung L over B, all values. So, yung CP is equal to negative 0.7. Yung Q is equal to QH. For the roof, from table 207B4-1, sa windward roof, so may criteria tayo, H over L, so 7.5 over 35 is equal to 0.214 less than 0.25. So in this case, dalawa ang value ng CP natin. We have CP1 is equal to negative 0.70. Then, yung CP2 is equal to negative 0.18. Now, for the leeward roof, yung CP natin is equal to negative 0.3. Step 7, we have wind pressure. So, formula, P is equal to Q times G times CP minus QI times GCPI. Now, for the case 1, external pressure minus positive GCPI for windward wall so mayroon tayong value ng P with corresponding elevation yung Q is equal to QZ yung G is equal to 0.85 yung CP is equal to 0.8 yung, Q, yung QI is equal to Q, QH then yung GCPI is positive 0.18 Now, for the leeward wall, yung P is equal to negative 1,428.83 pascals. For side wall, yung P is equal to negative 1,830.33 pascals. For the windward roof, sa CP1, ang P natin is equal to 1,830.33 pascals 
Now, for the CP2, ang P natin is equal to negative 786.45 pascals. For leeward roof, yung P natin is equal to negative 1027.34 pascals. Now, for the case 2, external pressure minus negative GCPI. For windward wall, so halos parehas lang sa case 1, except sa GCPI, so negative 0.18. For leeward wall, yung P natin is equal to negative 578.62. Pascals. For side wall, yung P is equal to negative 980.11 pascals. For windward roof, sa CP1, yung P is equal to negative 980.11 pascals. Sa CP2, ang P is equal to negative 63.76 pascals. Now, for the leeward roof, yung P is equal to negative 177.13 pascals. Now, for the loading applic application, so, sa case 1, may dalawa tayong figure. So, we have windward wall, leeward wall, then for the side wall, perpendicular to this plane. Then the windward roof, then leeward roof, dito sa kabila, halos parehas lang yung value, except sa windward roof, okay? For case 2, so we have windward wall. For the leeward wall, side wall, windward roof, then leeward roof. Ito sa kabila, halos parehas lang. Except sa windward roof. So, take note. Plus and minus signs signify pressures acting toward and away from the surface respectively.